very warm welcome to this, our first morning prayer together of September of the new academic year. I hope uh, you are well this morning as we come together to pray. Today, the church commemorates Gregory the Great, uh, Bishop of Rome and teacher of the faith. Gregory is born in the year 540, the son of a Roman senator. As a young man, he pursued a governmental career and in 573 was made prefect of the city of Rome. Following the death of his father, he resigned his office, sold his inheritance and became a monk. In 579, he was sent by the Pope to Constantinople to be his representative to the Patriarch. He returns to Rome in 586 and was himself elected Pope in 590. At a time of political turmoil, Gregory proved an astute administrator and diplomat, securing peace with the Lombards. He initiated the mission to England, sending Augustine and 40 monks from his own monastery to refound the English church. His writings were pastorally orientated. His spirituality was animated by a dynamic love and desire for God. Indeed, he is sometimes called the doctor of desire. For Gregory, desire was a metaphor for the journey with God, as Pope he styled himself a servant of the servants of God a title which typified both his personality and his ministry. He died on this day in 604. And we'll be hearing a little bit more uh, from a reading from a sermon um, of Gregory the Great uh, later on. So a moment to gather our thoughts and quieten our hearts as we come before God to pray this morning. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and light to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 142 Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. I cry aloud to the Lord, to the Lord I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him of my trouble. When my spirit faints within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk have they laid a snare for me. I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to and no one cares for my soul. I cry out to you, O Lord, and say, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am brought very low. Save me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, then shall the righteous gather around me. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. God of Compassion you regard the forsaken and give hope to the crushed in spirit. Hear those who cry to you in distress and bring your ransomed peoples to sing your glorious praise now and forever. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, starting at verse 1. The words of Agur, son of Jaca, an oracle. Thus says the man, I am weary, O God. I am weary, O God. How can I prevail? Surely I am too stupid to be human. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the holy ones. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in the hollow of the hand? Who has wrapped up the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is the person's name? And what is the name of the person's child? 
Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or else he will rebuke you and you will be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Do not deny them to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need, or I shall be full and deny you. And say, Who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Four things on earth are small, yet they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people without strength, yet they provide their food in the summer. The badgers are a people without power, yet they make their homes in the rocks. And locusts have no king, yet all of them march in rank. The lizard can be grasped in the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. Three things are stately in their stride. Four are stately in their gait. The lion, which is mightiest amongst the wild animals, and does not turn back before any. The strutting rooster, the he-goat and a king striding before his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is from the Gospel according to St Mark, chapter 9, starting at verse 14. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and some scribes arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe and they ran forward to greet him. He asked them, What are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I bought you my son, and he has a spirit that makes him unable to speak, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid, and I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, You faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. It has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you are able. All things can be done for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, This kind can come out only through prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so a short reading from a homily of Gregory the Great. The prophet Ezekiel, whom the Lord sent to preach his word, is described as a watchman. A watchman always selects a high vantage point in order to be able to observe things better. In the same way, whoever is appointed watchman to a people should live on the heights so that he can help his people by having a broad perspective. I find it hard to make such a statement because such words are a reproach to myself. My preaching is mediocre and my life does not cohere with the values I preach so inadequately. I do not deny that I am guilty, for I recognise in myself lethargy and negligence. Perhaps my very awareness of my failings will gain me pardon from a sympathetic judge. When I lived in a monastic community, I could keep my tongue from idle chatter and devote my mind almost continually to the discipline of prayer. However, since assuming the burden of pastoral care, I find it difficult to keep steadily recollected because my mind is distracted by numerous responsibilities. I am required to deal with matters affecting churches and monasteries, and often I must judge the lives and actions of individuals. One moment I am required to participate in civil life and the next moment to worry over the incursions of barbarians. I fear these wolves who menace the flock entrusted to my care. 
At another time, I have to exercise political responsibility in order to give support to those who uphold the rule of law. I have to cope with the wickedness of criminals, and the next moment I am asked to confront them, but yet in all charity. My mind is in chaos, fragmented by the many and serious matters I am required to give attention to. When I try to concentrate and focus my intellectual resources for preaching, how can I do justice to the sacred mystery of the word? I am often compelled by virtue of my office to socialise with people of the word and sometimes I have to re relax the discipline of my speech. I realise that if I were to maintain the inflexible pattern of con this conversation that my conscience dictates, certain weaker individuals would simply shun my company, with the result that I would never be able to attract them to the goal I desire for them. So inevitably I find myself listening to their mindless chatter. And because I am weak myself, I find myself gradually being sucked into their idle talk and saying the very things that I recoiled from listening to before. I enjoy lying back where beforehand I was conscious lest I fall. Who am I? What kind of watchman am I? I do not stand on the pinnacle of achievement. I languish in the pit of my frailty. And yet, although I am unworthy, the creator and redeemer of us all has given me the grace to see life whole and an ability to speak effectively of it. It is for the love of God that I do not might spare myself preaching him. Powerful uh, final sentences there from Gregory the Great. And yet, although I am unworthy, the creator and redeemer of us all has given me the grace to see life whole and an ability to speak effectively of it. It is for the love of God that I do not spare myself preaching him. So words to ponder on this morning. Let's join together in the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so we turn to our time of intercessions. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Jesus, light of the world, Bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy hear us. Accept our prayers and be with us always. Amen. Merciful Father, who chose your Bishop Gregory to be a servant of the servants of God, grant that, like him, we may ever long to serve you by proclaiming your gospel to the nations and may ever rejoice to sing your praises. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me on this service of morning prayer. I pray that you have a good week. See you again. God bless.